chance to ask for a campaign with the confidence rising. I told WDF, don't switch good times, are coming on even deep diving. Fan cams, reactions, watch alongs to the pride of London thriving. The Eagles of South, they flying. Keep your eyes on us, we ain't hiding. Yes, yes, guys. Welcome back to Eagle Eye Football, and this is the match preview for Crystal Palace versus Liverpool on Sunday. Uh, today, I'm joined with the chairman. How's it going? Yeah, not too bad. Just I'm disappointed that um, the game was moved to Sunday because if it was left on tomorrow, we would have gone, wouldn't we? So yeah, because yeah, you know, getting back that late, you need a whole day to recover after that, and then. Yeah. You don't get that day. You just have to go straight back into work the next day, which is a exactly, bit rubbish. Yeah, exactly. Go on a Saturday, get home Saturday night, all day Sunday recover, back to work Monday. It's fine, yeah. Yeah, but this is um, at their place at Anfield. Um, you know, a stadium where we have some good performances, but the result never seems to reflect that, let's say. No, we haven't. We haven't won there for quite a long time, have we, actually? I can't remember when the last time we was won there. I it was been won. Okay, wasn't it? That was yeah. for the last time. Well, exactly. So we've, we've, we've sort of done okay there. We've never got anything out of it. We haven't got a draw or a win for, say, probably whenever Ben Take scored. Um, yeah, those two goals he scored, didn't he? Remember that? It's combined. What's that going to be? 2016, 17, 18, something like that? I'm not sure. Yeah, because I remember it was, um, it was Sacco on loan, wasn't it? That's right, yeah. And um, even though Saka was still a Liverpool player, he went and sat on the Palace bench and went celebrating with Benteke, didn't they? Yeah, they done the handshake, didn't they? <laughs> so yeah, that 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 probably didn't wasn't best pleasing for the uh, the Liverpool fans, let's say. No, they didn't like but, it at all, didn't they? Yeah, but let's let's get into it. So, like I said before, we, we've we we have some all right performances against Liverpool. But we, we never seem to get the business done lately. Like, how, how do you think this game's going to go? Um, what, I would, what I would say is I don't think we get the luck against Liverpool. I think we've had some really rough decisions against them. Um, but, see, so, so yes, yeah, he changed everything, didn't it? Um, his team selection and losing to Atalanta suggested that the league is his priority. Um so he rests a lot of players, or he brought them on at half time, and they still managed to lose the second half two 0 But um, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I can't see us getting anything to be brutally honest with you. But saying that, I thought first half against Man City, I thought we played very well, and the, the Liverpool home game, I thought we played we pretty okay. And I thought it was it was pretty unlucky in that game not to get anything out of it. So yeah, you, you just ne- you never know with Palace. You just don't know. Yeah, because the, the home game, to be fair, we really should have got a draw out of it. But, you know, we just sort of fell asleep at the end and let Harvey Elliott run through everyone. Yeah, it's a sickener, wasn't it? Same as Chelsea, wasn't it? Fell asleep at the end again. So... Yeah, but that's, that's a very Palace thing to do. And I know we said it when we did all the Luton previews. They score a lot of goals late. So do Liverpool. Mm. I mean... I mean, with, with Palace, you know, when you play against a big team, you just never know. I mean, I think the only big team this year, you think about it, away from home, we've got a draw at Man City, we, we beat Man United away, and for, what, 60 minutes of Tottenham, we were leading 1-0. Probably at Chelsea, we got back to one order, we were playing, was playing pretty OK to the end, and it's probably only Arsenal away where we were pretty rubbish from start to finish. But all the other games, we were in the game for the majority of the game, so you just, you just mm. never know, yeah. Just never know. Wasn't the Arsenal game Paddy again, wasn't it? Because Hodgson yeah. was unwell or something, right? I think it, I think it was actually. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, so Paddy had Arsenal away two years in a row. Or was it? Or was it? And we were rubbish both times. No, no, no. Roy was there. Do you remember the picture at the end of Roy looking at standing on the side and looking at the banner from the HF? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. I remember. Yeah, because you was on the picture. Wasn't you? <laughs> I may have been, I may have been on, the, on right in front of the board, and I may have been on BBC, but you know, I'm standing, I'm not, sta- I'm standing on the seat. I mean, <laughs> I mean, no one needs to know I'm that short. I was standing on the floor. I was just that tall. You're six foot eight now. Dude. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. But away from home, our, our record's been pretty crap. 
we've been pretty crap at home, pretty crap away. Do you think yeah, that think... Glasner's trying to turn that around? Because we've had some good performances lately. Well, yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, we've only won three away games, haven't we? I think it's United, Burnley and Sheffield. Well, everyone beats them too, didn't they? But um, the last couple of games, uh, we went to Bournemouth. We, we, we was in that game for long periods. And to be fair, Glasner made a mistake, which, which I don't think he would do. He didn't do it against Man City. He didn't move the uh, left in where he was. Forrest, I think we, we could easily won that game. Easily won. They'd gone in half time 2 0. Their heads would have gone down, would have won. Um, so some of the games we've we've not got anything out of. We've actually de- deserved something out of it. So yes, we, two things. We need a bit of luck, what everyone does. And the other thing is we've got to take some of our chances, don't we? You know, we if we have five chance to take one, we need to score with like two or three, yeah. That's the sort of thing. So I mean to be fair. You say that we've got to take our chances, and a certain striker has been taking his chances in JP. Uh, no, I totally agree. I mean, JP has been playing the best football at Palace since he's been here, isn't it? He, he's, he's hold up players good, he's scoring goals, he's all over the place. But, you know, but obviously, I'm not talking about JP, the other people like Eze, who's clean through um, against. Bournemouth and against Forest, and we didn't make most of that situation. And there's other sort of things like that, isn't there? So it's not. I'm not looking at just JP, but JP's doing very well. But we need somebody else to step up and score a couple of goals. And hopefully, fingers crossed, Michael Lise is coming back now. Um, he will provide the ammunition to do that. Yeah, in um, Glasner's press conference, he did say that uh, Michael Lise has been training. Michael Lise will be in the squad, but he's still probably another week or two out before he starts to um, start Premier League games for us. Uh, when, What time, roughly, do you think that Glasner would bring him on? Do you think he'd bring him on a little bit sooner than he did against Man City, or do you think it'll be around about the same time? Uh, I think he's, now his game plan is 75 minutes, roughly. But then it depends on the situation of the game. If we're 2-3-0 down by that point, uh, I wouldn't risk him. Personally, if it's nil nil, one all, one nil down, then yeah, why not? You know, but no more than 15 20 minutes, so just build them up slowly. Yeah, but obviously, I don't know about you, but I'm still a little bit scarred by at least they coming on the pitch, doing one sprint, doing his hamstring again, and coming off. Yeah, he didn't do that against Man City, did he? So it shows he's better. Yeah, he, he's definitely a lot, a lot more fit than. Uh, when the supposed medical team cleared him to play last time. Um, but I feel like Elise's, Elise coming back will make Eze better. Oh, massively. I mean, when they've played together, we, we've actually looked really good, haven't we? I mean, not so much this year, but last year, especially when, funnily enough, when Roy came back last year, wasn't it? Southampton uh, away, Leeds away. You know, we were unplayable, really untouchable. But if you can get those two clicking, don't care about Liverpool. Like anything at Liverpool is a bonus. Don't risk Elise so much. We want him for Newcastle West Ham. That's massively important. Definitely. Let's go into some comments. Uh, Monty say, I think we're in deep trouble now. I think we've got players coming back now. If we if we keep playing badly, even with these even with these players coming back into the team, then I would agree with you. But I think right now, I think 30 points, granted Luton have closed that gap, but the people below us still have to play each other as well. So they'll be taking points off each other. I think we, Dan we, even we, I think Dan even calculated it. I think he said that there's like a, like a 60% chance of staying up, even if we don't get any more points for the rest of the season. So there's still quite a, like quite a good odds on not getting any points until the end of the season. But of course, to make everyone feel safe and to keep my sanity, let's say. We need to get some points. <laughs> I think um, I think Forrest, Luton, Sheffield United have all got to pretty much play each other. So they're all going to take points off each other. But we are quite capable of getting three points. Get, we can sneak three draws. 33, 34 is going to be enough this year. 100%. Ron says, uh, if we keep it tight and take our chances, then we have a chance. To be fair, Absolutely. you can say that against all teams. Yeah. Really? Uh, why do Liverpool have to go and lose 3-0 before we play them? That that was going to be one of my questions for later, but uh, I'll, I'll I'll say my, my piece on that then. Cool. Because they lost, they're going to batter us. 
Uh, Kyle here says, uh, we just hope Elise can come through with some magic. I think he's, he will, he's... because he came on for, what, 10 minutes and he made two big chances already uh, when he came on against Man City. I wouldn't say he tore him apart, but he was a problem. It was a big problem. Uh, you can never underestimate the jam of Liverpool. That that combined with our difficulties in scoring, it's going to be another City game uh, without the early goal from Qatar. You, 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 you never go. You never know, dear. You never know. If we can get a chance, and the way Matet is playing at the moment, get a couple of chances early doors and get in front. Maybe maybe that was a problem. Man City scored too early. I don't know. Give him a chance. <laughs> I doubt it. We we never score early, so. <laughs> and, <laughs> That's that one goal of the season. I, I'm sure we've only scored about three goals in the first half. <laughs> it's not many, is it? Uh, big up team, solo. Uh, Rich says, "Have we become Elise AFC?" I don't think it's to that extent yet, but you know, if he if he stays and he keeps doing what he's doing, then it might become Elise AFC. But there is talk that Man City are really progressing quickly when because they're trying to sign him, aren't they? Apparently, that's going through very, very quickly. So, we might not actually have him next season. Uh, no, that's not what Glasner wants. Uh, it needs to be clinical. How many minutes for Elise? I'd say 15, 20, 25 minutes, maybe, uh, yeah, depending on I what agree. the game's looking like. If it's 1 1, maybe we're 1 0 down, he might bring him on. But if it's more than a two goal, three goal deficit, there's no point risking him. There really isn't. Uh, Liverpool play a high line. I think we can expose them. We can expose them the same way we did against Man City, but they do have faster defenders than Man City. So I don't know if Mateta will be able to run away from Van Dijk like he did to John Stones. Uh, Liverpool's always struggled against the back five, yet we said that in Tat Eagle. So if you want to have a little bit more of a breakdown of that, go back and watch that. We had a bit of an issue with Tat Eagle, didn't we? Uh, mm. YouTube just didn't work. So we had to record it and then put it out so it came out at like half 10 11 o'clock i can't remember uh do we have any other injuries returns other than michael you say i think jez is back uh but that's about it um but with jez back i don't think they'll have jez and alisa on the bench because jez just isn't going to get game time uh do you want to give everyone an update about um what we watched earlier about um mark way well you, you you can you can do that well, Mark was discussed on, on the pitch we watched the pre-part pre-show to Man City, and he seems to be quite confident of making um, making the, the back end of the season. So, with a bit of luck, maybe Man United at home the last probably three four games. That's going to be a massive massive bonus for us. If he yeah, and he, and he says he he thinks he can get back, and you know he actually said himself that he's not trying to rush himself back for the Euros. He said he's looking. He's looking at healing this injury for the long term so he can play uninjured for the foreseeable future. So that's good to hear from such a young player. And Absolutely. one thing I'll ask you is well, and I asked you off camera earlier when we were talking about him. How why is he not our captain? Seriously, why is he not our captain? He he is a born captain, isn't he? But so saying that, so is um Anderson, isn't he? You know, they're leaders on the pitch in here. Maybe maybe um Mark is not like a, a shouty leader, like, like like Anderson is. You know, shouting and screaming at all the players. But he's a he's a very quiet reserve. But he's such a good player. But it's funny, really. He can be captain of England under twenty one, but he can't be captain of Palace. How does that work out? I know. Uh, Mitch know. Mitch here says my sanity went out the window when Luton equalised. Yeah, join the club. <laughs> John Cena back again. Big up yourself. <laughs> What the hell was that? I don't know. I forgot how to do it. It's been such a long time. As if you've ever watched wrestling in your life. Don't lie to yourself. <laughs> uh, big up, Ree. Said Chatterjee Squared. Uh, big up yourself, Tim. Uh, just realised I need to change my profile picture. Yeah, you can't be yeah, having Hodgson awesome. in there no more. No, nah, no. Nah. Uh, Tim here says, is there any chance we get a back free of Richards, Anderson, Gay with Wharton and Decore in front of them before the season's out or even for 15 minutes. No. <laughs> I don't I think, think so. I think Richards is out for another two, three weeks, isn't he? Yeah, Richards is built like a quaver. Gay's just coming back. 
I don't think we'll see Decore at all this season because we have got Wharton and Lerma. Actually, and here's he's... a question for you then. Who do you think is better centre-half, Richards or Lerma? So I think Lerma's doing very well there. I mean, Lerma, Lerma, Lerma's had two games. I mean, we can't... Yeah. And granted, he's he's played against Bournemouth and he's played against Man City. And, you know, he played well. He has played well. But I do think that Richards is a very good centre-back. He's just too injury-prone. He's a rubbish right-back, isn't he? He's rubbish at fullback, but yeah. and in midfield, we can't forget that he had midfield in him this season as well. Uh, but I mean, yeah. to be fair to Tim, I mean, you know, we've just been deprived, haven't we? If it's that one, I mean, if we had three or four games of, you know, like you said, there, Richard Anderson, Gray, um, Munoz, and and Mitchell, and and Decore, and Walton, and Elise, and Eze, and JP. I mean, honestly, we wouldn't be in this problem now, would we? No, not at all. Uh, Mike is saying, let's stay positive. What do people expect from the City game? I'm actually liking going back to Sellhurst again. I mean, I wouldn't say I'm at that point yet where I'm excited again, like I was under Vieira. But I'm not going to lie to you. It, the football's good again. The football's good again. And finally, yeah. Earth saying, Chair rocking his black red T-shirt. Yeah, is he, uh, the, the new feed album? Went to the concert at uh, Roundhouse a couple of weeks ago. It was excellent. So go and buy the album if you like indie rock. It's excellent. Well, uh, moving on. With with uh, so I've sort of got two notes here. I've got I've got I'll sort of smash them both together. Well, with um, Liverpool losing three 0 to Atalanta and Klopp leaving, do you think that they're going to put all their eggs in the Premier League basket now? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, if I think if yesterday was the Champions League, I don't think he would have um, rested in players. And I also think if it was, he had a bit of a cushion in the, in the, in the Premier League, probably would have rested in players. But the fact of the matter is, the Premier League is so tight this year. First time for a long time, it's a three horse race. So the the question is, is it the Europa League? Or is it a premiership? I think he's going for the premiership all the way. If it was a Champions League yesterday, maybe a bit different. But yeah, yeah. undoubtedly. He is putting his first choice side out on Saturday, come up May. Yeah, and, and also that because he's leaving after such a long time at Liverpool, he's gonna want to go out holding some silverware, isn't he? It? Yeah, it's a good point you make actually, because uh, Roy Keane was on the telly. And then it was talking about when he leaves, would he be, will he become a legend? And he doesn't think he will because he's won one Premier League, isn't he? And that's it. So he's going to want to go out winning two, isn't he? Yeah, well, well, to be fair, he's won one Premier League, but he's also won one Champions League. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. So to be fair, that's more Champions Leagues than Man United have won ever since he's been at Liverpool. Of, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you're right, absolutely. But they are going to try, yeah, definitely. But the way he's setting his team up. I think he's definitely going for the Premier League. So I don't be surprised on Sunday at one o'clock when we see the team come out. It is the absolute 100% strongest team we can get his hands on. So you, you think that because he rested players against Atalanta? Yeah, absolutely even, right. even Even though he brought all the big guns on at half-time, you still think they'll yeah. start against us? Don't forget, Liverpool were home. There was no travelling, was there? They played half a game on and they've got a three-day break, race, don't they? So no, they're all starting, no question about it. Mm -hmm. uh, Patrick here saying he opening the lines up today it depends how long it takes us to get through all our notes if it takes us not long it, if you've got like 15-20 minutes then we'll open the lines up and then we'll have a chat yeah absolutely uh, you can jump in uh, Guitar Guy says a shame we sold Jake O'Brien really yeah he would have filled in wouldn't he, he bang, to be bang on funny days. enough Jake O'Brien would have played quite a few minutes for Palace this year God, would he would he but he's a starter for Leon, so for him, it's probably the right move because he's a he's a fully fledged starter now in their team. Uh, I don't see how Klopp can't be considered a legend, especially when you consider where Liverpool was before he arrived. He he had a dreadful team, didn't he? He yeah. had a really really crap team. Yeah, no, he has done well. I mean, to, I'm, I'm talking about what Roy Keane was saying, but that and I'd, also I think he, he he's done amazing things with that team. And granted, he has spent a lot of money, but if you compare the money he spent to Arsenal, 
Oh, Man United, Chelsea. Man City, Chelsea. He actually hasn't spent that much money. No. no. Like, I think spent... It's still astronomical numbers when comparing to Palace, but if you compare to the other big six teams, he's not, he, he spent probably about the same as Tottenham, maybe even less. I think I read somewhere he spent 800 grand, 800 million since he's been there, which is what basically Chelsea spent last year. And that's 10 <laughs> years ago, isn't it? Whatever it is. So there you go. Yeah, I think he's been there for seven years. So I'm not sure. If you look at it that way, it's actually not too bad, is it? It's like 100 million a year, maybe a little yeah. bit more. They make that easy, don't they? Uh, Monty, uh, we have the fourth worst record for goals against now. Uh, a great playmaker as well. So, as you guys can see, there is no Liverpool fan here today, unfortunately. Uh, we did ask Callum from Coppish, but his schedule's a bit crazy because of the Champions League and then, I mean, not the Champions League, the Europa League and all the stuff that he's on his channel. But uh, we thank him a lot because he still found the time to send in a video uh, to us. So we're going to go and play that now. Uh, Callum from Coppish, if you haven't subscribed to Coppish, definitely go and subscribe to them and do great stuff. But here's Callum. Yes, guys. Shout out to Eagle Eyed Football first and foremost. Sorry I couldn't do this live, guys. Really, really apologize. I'd have loved to, but schedule has been hectic. However, I couldn't let a Crystal Palace game come and go without shouting out you guys. First and foremost, guys, if you're watching, smash a like on this video and subscribe to Eagle Eyed Football. How do I feel about this fixture? I'd have felt a lot better if Liverpool didn't get uh, absolutely battered at Anfield by Atalanta. Um, I think this game's going to go one of two ways. We're either going to come out like a wounded animal and really put a hurting on you guys or we're going to feel sorry for ourselves and you guys are going to put a number on us. You guys know me well enough by now tonight. I don't really bet against our team that often and I'm not going to start now. Palace have their dangers, especially with bloody Elise back, which is annoying. One of my favourite players outside of Liverpool. Hopefully we sign him in the summer too. Um, but yeah, he's back now. Had a really good cameo appearance against Man City. Mateta had a good finish. Eze is Eze, a quality footballer. Your new manager is doing a good job. Um, I reckon you'll probably go five at the back or three in transition. Um, I think you're setting up really well and the future looks bright under Palace. You definitely won't get relegated this season. Hopefully that's Everton. Um, but yeah, you'll be fine this season. I hope you do well next season, apart from the two games which we play you in. That being said, you want to know my score predictions. You want to know the team that I'd potentially put out tomorrow. So here goes. I'm going with Kelleher in goal still. Alisson wasn't on the bench yesterday. And I, despite the mistake by Kelleher, I still think he should keep his place. Right back, I'm going to go with Bradley, Virgil and Kwanzaa at centre-back. No, in fact, Virgil and Konate at centre-back. Left back, I'm going to go Robbo. Centre midfield, I'm going to go Endo, McAllister and Elliot. Up top, I'm going Salah, Nunes and Diaz with hopefully an appearance by Jota. And for my score prediction, I'm going to go 2-0 Liverpool. A tight 2-0, but I think we'll get the three points. I think we'll get the win and uh, hopefully we kick on the rest of our season because we need to win that Premier League trophy. Europa is looking very, very slim now. But let's get it. Let's get it. Boys, as always, love to you all. Love the channel. Love you guys individually as well. And um, hopefully next time we'll get to do this live next season and for seasons to come. Thank you very much for having me on the channel. Smash the like button again, people. Subscribe to Eagle Eye Football. And until you see you again, stay safe, stay blessed. My name's Callum, representing Team Coppish. Take it easy. Yeah, big up to Callum for sending in the video, even though he's got a crazy busy schedule. Um, but some, but he he's sort of replicating what we see as outsiders as well. That he definitely thinks that the Europa League is a bit ropey, and that he thinks that they're going to go for the league. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know when he read his team out, you look at it and go, "Well, that's not so bad." That's not. But when he gets to the front three, you go, "Bloody hell!" Oh, you know, Diaz, <laughs> Nunes, and Salah. <laughs> I know. Oh my god! If we can just keep them out, but that's why we're going to have to probably stick the five at the back and not commit too much. You know, because you know one thing Roy used to do, even though he should bore the pants off, yeah. But what he's always said when he played the big teams away, you've got to stay in the game, haven't you? Like we did at Man City. There's no point going gung ho if five have done at half time. So if you can get to one, two nil with like 15 minutes to go, then you could probably be a bit more expansive. But um, 
But no, you know, I'm, I'm not quietly confident, but I still think they'll do it. But, um, but yeah, 2 0 seems about, yeah. you know, it's a fair result, isn't it? Yeah, I did. I did laugh when he says, "I want Everton to go down." That that made me chuckle well, a little bit. Um, <clears throat> but because he he started speaking about his uh, potential lineup, let's go through. Um, firstly, let's go through uh, our lineup or what we think we would play. So let's make it. It's basically that, isn't it? So. I Let's think it'd be go. more of a four-five-one. Yeah, sorry, uh, yeah, definitely so more of a stringent four-five-one. So it'd be Henderson in goal. Yeah, doing very well actually, isn't he? Be fair. Well, we ne- we never questioned his shot stopping. It was just everything else, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> True. So go Ward. Uh, are we going to Lerma at the back again? I think it has to be. And then Wharton. Yeah. Wharton Hughes in midfield again. I wonder if you might go with Schlup starting because he's a little bit quicker, a bit stronger. That that was one thing I was going to ask you. So we come to here. Let me move these guys a bit closer because it's not going to look. It's going to look a bit more like that, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, we're not going to be committing too much, are we? So. The question I was going to ask you, and you brought up the correct player. Ayu hasn't been playing that well lately. Yeah. And every single time he hasn't been playing well, he's been taken off for Schlupp, who's done yeah. pretty well. Yeah. So the question to you is normally, Eze will play on the left, Ayu will play on the right, and then JP will play through the middle. Yeah. However... With are you not playing the best? Do we start Schlupp, where you put Schlupp on the left and put Eze on the right? I think you'll probably go with Ayu, and the reason why I say that is because I, I didn't know this, but Ayu is a practicing Muslim, isn't he? So he's been fasting for the last month, and that may have something to do with the fact you're not eating. You're um, you're getting tired very quickly, aren't you? Now, now we've had Ramadan now, Eid now, so that's finished now. So I'm guessing that he'll probably go with Ayu. Because the thing with Ayu as well, he does defend and you do get a lot of attacking options out of him. Not as good as he has been, mind you. But even Man City, he, he hit the crossbar, didn't he? Yeah, even though he should have passed. Absolutely, absolutely. So that is absolutely. the team that we believe that Glasner would play against Liverpool? Yeah, I think I think so. Yeah, I think so. So then now, if we turn this into a combined 11 with Liverpool, we get rid of this five at the back almost yeah. instantly, don't we? We go into like a 4-3-3. Three, three. We go into this, basically, don't we? So, I think Robertson. Right, left back. Yep. Uh, Van Dijk. Uh, unfortunately... Uh, yeah. takes over from Lerma. Yeah. Um, I think, I think Anderson Hen- keeps his place. I think Kanate is an incredible footballer, though, isn't he? He's a great centre-back. Then we've got to get three Palace players, yeah. Yeah, I know Henderson's staying in there. Keller has their only goalkeeper at the moment, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, yeah, Henderson definitely staying there. Um, I'd, I'd probably put Walton in I think, Endo. I think we play... Munoz over uh, Connor Bradley. Yeah, I agree. Because even though Bradley's been good, he's still a very young player and hasn't yeah. got much experience. I would still, I would put Kunate here over okay. Anderson because I think that this partnership is incredible. And if they do play it, we're going to see the problems. Are, are you? I'm not even going to entertain that. Mo Salah straight in. The front, the front three of Liverpool straight in. The Diaz, um, Diaz, Nunes, and Salah. Yeah, and then probably maybe Eze in the ten. So yeah, I was thinking these three up front. I do <sighs> Palace bias. I may have, and you may have. I do believe that Wharton is better than Endo. 
Oh, absolutely. I think totally Endo, en- Endo's one of those guys that will do the, the basics well. But yeah. Wharton is just an incredible talent, and he will be world-class one day. He will be, yeah, definitely. And Dan said it when we first signed him. He said that he thinks that Adam Wharton has got a higher ceiling than Michael Lisa. And I thought, what? No way. But now I might actually start to see it. Uh, so let's put Wharton as the sitting midfielder. Yeah. I do think that even though he's ex Brighton, he's still an incredible footballer. McAllister, yeah. With Alexis McAllister. And then lastly, Eze. So we've got four Palace players today, then. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Fair enough. Obviously, we would have wanted to put Michael Elise in there, but. Let's be real of ourselves. He's not better than Salah, is he? No, no chance. <laughs> no chance. But to me, as a combined eleven, that's a great, that's a great, that's a great team, isn't it? It really yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. One second, Nate is asking for the code, so Nate will be jumping in any second now. Let me just grab it for him. Uh. Sorry, guys. Just give me a minute. Cool. What does everybody, everybody think in the chat? Do, do you think what, what changes would anyone else make in the chat from the team that we've just gone through? Um, I don't think anyone changes anything. I, I, I actually think if anyone wants to change anything, for everyone that's fit, is uh. Mm, you know, I don't know really. I must admit. I mean, if everyone's okay, if if everyone's fit, yeah, Allison goes there. Yeah. But after Allison, though, does anyone else go in here? I, I think, think so. War, I think Wharton's better than Graven Birch. Yeah, and Endo. He's better than Endo. Harvey Elliott. El- Eze's better than Harvey Elliott. Yeah. Nate, how's it going? What are you saying, JC? What are you saying, Chairman? You good? Yeah, we're good. How's you? Yeah, not bad. I just finished up on Aussie's channel, so I thought I'd jump on, make myself known in case some people thought that I'd left the team or, you know, that one. It's <laughs> been a while since I've been on, isn't it? Yeah, you want to introduce so. yourself again, just just for the just for the <laughs> just for the certain new subscribers. <laughs> uh, it's, the, it's the CEO of Charity Professional Football Club. That, that, that's the best way I can put it. Really, there's no other way to describe it. Really, but yeah, it's good to be back on home turf on EEF. Would you think uh, about the combined eleven, mate? Would you um, change yeah. anything? Would you make any changes if everyone's fit from this combined eleven? Um, no, not really. Because let's be real, even with our best team out, they, they've still got players that are levels above ours, to be honest. Um, arguably, yeah, I'd say spiritual is right with Trent over Munoz because let's be fair, Trent's a sensational player. Um, yeah, yeah, but well, we have to get I, I, players I, I, in there, unfortunately. I, I can't, I can't, I, I, can't I, 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 I mean, I see that there's an awful lot of their players in there, but um. Maybe the only exception, if he was fully fit, would be Decore over Wharton, because I think it's not it's not close it's not far between the two because Wharton's been fantastic since he's been here. But yeah, I'm not having any of their DMs over ours. Like or Endo's Endo's cheeks, in my opinion. Or with spiritual here saying Trent, what we could mm. do is we could swap the midfield around. Put Trent in where Munoz is, and then move the whole midfield around and get rid of McAllister, and then put Czech, Wharton, and Eze in the midfield there. We could do that, yeah. Um, sort of like this. Well, like a four-three-three three, or four-two-one-three. Like that. That's actually that. That to me, that looks a lot better already. Take take Munoz out and put Trent in it. Oh yeah. 
I'm, I I'm just saying, seeing Wharton and Decore in midfield next season, ideally, for Lerma, you know, I, I, it's big because you're thinking Lerma was brought in to be Decore's partner, but now Wharton could be going ahead of Lerma. But Lerma's been brilliant since Decore's been injured. So it's kind of crazy. But it's it's a good it's a good headache to have, I suppose. But yeah, I mean, um Yeah. Dan Dan said it on one of our previous shows. He said that we're so used to having no squad depth that we're trying to find ways to get all of our better players in the team. He said, just chill out and we can actually have Lerma on the bench. It's not the end of the world. Yeah. Because having Lerma as a backup to that kind of midfield is something that we've never had before, really. I think the last time we had it was arguably at a push, maybe MacArthur, Jedinak and Ledley, where one of the three would sit out with, with the other two playing. And look, granted, you know, this is this is a different ball game altogether, but you see what I'm saying. Since oh, then, we've had players come and go that are pretty poor because James McCarthy wasn't it. Let's just call a spade a spade. Jairo Riedewald, not it. There's too many players that have just been like, yeah, d d d d they're not the ones. But this now, if we've got either Wharton or Lerma sitting out and the other one is, is playing alongside the Corre, that's crazy squad depth. Oh, of course. Uh, with you, I guess, being away for a little while, I don't think we've actually heard your thoughts on Oliver Glasner. What, what do you think of what he's done to the club, how he's changed it, and do you think it's for the better? I like that we're braver going forward because under Hodgson, it was literally sit back and hope for the best. You yeah. know, and naturally, look, last Saturday, we knew what we were up against against Man City. We were like, look, let's just hope it's not an embarrassing score. And I tweeted that out. I was like, lads, just don't make it embarrassing. Like, we know we're going to lose, but just don't make it embarrassing. And in fairness, it wasn't embarrassing. You know, I've given Henderson an awful lot of stick, but he ain't saving that first De Bruyne goal. He ain't. No, no one's saving it. That's yeah, no, real. but you know what I mean? Like, I, I'm known for giving this guy stick. But, but even I was like, no keeper is saving that. I don't care what you say. But um, I like what he's doing. But I want to see him fully backed. Or if need be, sell to buy and see him use the funds for his players. But we've got too many ex-managers players still in the squad. And that, for me, is a massive problem as to what we have now. Is that we've got players from without... I think we've got players as far back as maybe Allardyce and Pulis, if I'm not mistaken. Even further back, even Dougie Friedman's players are still here. That says a lot. So you're like, bloody hell, we really don't clear the players out like we should. Mm -hmm. You know? And... Um, I think ideally we need Glasner to be backed properly, which again, that's subjective because what I mm. could say is backing him, you lot might disagree with. And look, that's fine. I'm not here to say that what I'm saying is gospel, but what I've seen of us, aside from the Burnley game where we beat 10 men for the majority of the game, I just want to stop us seeing score first and concede stupid goals. <laughs> that's what's killed us in the Forest and Luton game. Just like we weren't great. But how have we managed to throw away two points so care four points, sorry, so carelessly like that? It's just crazy. Mm -hmm. I think barring barring one game, I think under Glass we've scored first in every other game, haven't we? Every every game that we've scored in so we've far under Glasner, we've scored first. Yeah. Yeah. Tottenham City. Yeah. Bournemouth. Tottenham it's City. It's only Bournemouth, isn't it? Brentford. Yeah, but that just goes to show Luton. you, really. Yeah, Luton, Forest. Yeah, Burnley. Uh, not but, Burnley, Sheffield United. No, was that was Burnley? Hodgson, wasn't it? Was it but Burnley? His yeah, first only win. The story is, though, that whenever we've scored under Glasgow, we've scored first, and that's great, yeah. but we still concede late on into the game, and that's mm. still an issue with Crystal Palace, and that's been an issue with us before Vieira, even Hodgson's first time, even all the way back to... Um, De Boer, really, fitness was... I'd go back issue. as far as say that was an issue under Pardew, JC, to be honest. That was an issue under Alan Pardew. Never mind Allardyce or um, De Boer. And I, I hear what you're saying, but I think th this is a long-going issue that Steve Parrish has either willingly not looked at properly or is hoping that Dougie Friedman can fix with, you know, miracle signings that, like Elise and Eze, they bail us out. Because... Yeah. You look at you, you you won't get a lease for the money we got him for. You're just thinking eight million. What? What? You know, but 
It is what yeah. it is. Just and now we're looking at sixty seventy for an eight yeah. million buy. That's incredible. And part of and part of me, JC, is thinking we need to bring someone in like Ronnie Edwards. I know a lot of people are saying, "Oh, he's not good enough." A lot of people said that about some of the players we brought before, and he can't be worse than what we have now. So well, to be to be fair, I hold my hand up and say this with my chest. When we were looking at um, signing Mark, I was thinking, "Oh my, twenty million pounds on a guy that's had one year in in the championship. That's that's a bit of a dodgy signing." But now look, he's he's probably one of our best players. Yeah, and again, and look, I'm guilty of it. You know me. I've said some wild things in my time on the channel. Yeah, we know. <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, it, it is refreshing when you look at it and go, I can't believe I actually said that. What was? And then, and then you realise, you know what? Fair play, I got it wrong. Horribly wrong, but mm -hmm. fair play, I got it yeah. wrong. I think, but, um, to, to be fair, when I do transfer weekly, I'm just setting myself up for it because I said, I said, Lerma's not good enough. And now... <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, look, you know, you only go off of what you see when you play, when these players play against Palace. Yeah. You know, because if, you, if you'd if you said to me that Jeffrey Schlupp and Jordan I would play for us in the future, I'd be like, these guys are cheeks. But when they first came, they were very good. But as time's gone on, we're like, yeah, now they're back to being cheeks again. You know. <laughs> um, yeah, so, but as Spiritual says, Glass is not a magician, which is correct. Because I think, ideally... We may have to sell to buy, which means goodbye, Elise, say, and either one of Gay or Anderson, which some people are hell bent on is the worst thing possible. It's the best thing. That's one thing we're guilty of is not selling at the key time. We held on to Zaha for way too long. And I get it. People were, were terrified of relegation, but you sell Zaha for the money we could have gotten for, reinvest that, we could have a different team now. Obviously, we chose not to do that, whatever it may be. But well, now is the time for us to reap the rewards of some very shrewd recruitment, in um, particularly Elise and Gay, because if we're making 50, 60 million back from Eze, from Elise, sorry, that's crazy. Because none of us would have seen him go for that much money when he joined. We're like, we signed a kid from Reading for 8 million. He better be worth it. Because no disrespect to Reading, but you're looking at it going, Reading are awful. So is this kid going to be another... Another brick? Is he going to be another? What was his face? Um, oh, who do we, uh, Jimmy Kebe? That's the last player we signed for Reading who plays in Lisa's position. You're like, if this guy's another Jimmy Kebe, I swear to God, I can't do this again. I don't think he would have been. Wasn't he? Wasn't he not player of the season in the championship when we bought him? Yeah, My two years said. in a row. Yeah, so he had potential, didn't he? And then the only Jimmy. person, and then the only person to take away that streak of him winning championship player of the year was Eze. And we bought him as yeah, well. No, no, I, I hear that. But what, what, what I'm going off of what we've previously bought from Reading in the past is I think it was Mariapa and, and um, Kebe. And of those two, Mariapa was more of a success story than Kebe was. Massively, yeah, massively. You know what I mean? So I'm like, buying from Reading hasn't always been a proven uh, a proven track record. But fair play to us on, on Elise and Eze in particular. We smashed it. But... Um, Oh boy! If there's ever a time I'm worried about playing Liverpool, it's Sunday because part of me was like, "Oh wow, wow, that's um, that's unfortunate." And then there's part of me thinking, "Oh no, we have them next. We're playing a wounded animal." Oh boy! Yeah, Not the yeah. self. Don't tune into Sky Sports on Sunday. Just just Ooh. go for a walk or something. No, <laughs> do you it's know so, For me, it's a free hit. I don't, I don't see it as a problem. For me, oh no, it, it is a free hit, chairman. It is a free hit. Yeah, West Ham and top, uh, West Ham and Newcastle are far more important. Win one, draw one, and two home games. We're, we're that's it. We're done. We're comfortable. Yeah, we're, we're not in any massive danger, but the points dropped at home to Luton and away at Forest oh, are the ones where I'm like. Okay, we did get points from from that game, but you're looking at it going, we win the lead in both games. Mm -hmm. And we missed absolute sitters in both games. You're like, I know we don't have outright ballers across the team, but that's worrying. But hopefully that's rectified in the summer because it needs to be. And JC, you've said this, I don't know how many times. Time and time again, you've said it in your fan camp. You've said it on Transfer Weekly. But, you know, you can say it to your blue in the face. We know it. We know what it is with upstairs. 
I mean, we could put the actual chairman involved and he'd still do a better job than Parrish. And that's no shade on you, Neil, but you know what I mean. Parrish doesn't listen to the fans. He just listens to whatever he sees on social media, which is half of them Palace Twitter nerds. It's like, these guys play FIFA every day. They don't actually watch proper football. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're they're just just career mode merchants. Can I just say one thing about Parrish, defending him, is that sort of a year ago, we had Mitchell playing for England. He's bought Mark, he's bought Anderson, he's bought Nunes, he's bought two England keepers, and we still think, can see goals like confetti. It makes no sense, does it? No, I, I, Neil, when I'm, when I'm knocking Parrish, I'm not saying that he hasn't invested or hasn't done a good job, but there's a part of me that thinks him saying those famous words at Nottingham Forest at home last season condemned him, because you're like, Fans don't forget that sort of thing because that yeah. was a lot of us read that as thought, okay, that's us challenging for bare minimum 12th yeah. to ninth. Anything above that is just unattainable for the squad we have. Let's be real. But to see us where we are now, you're like, huh? What's I, the I, next I, level? I, Millwall away next season. Come on, man. I, Do you know no, what I, I mean? T- like, I, I totally agree with you. I, I think Paris got excited because he thought. I'm going to give the job to Roy, and he's going to carry on in the same vein. But he didn't. He went back to pre, pre Roy, boring, tac- tacticless, you know, no passion, no nothing. But that last eight nine games, you thought he's going to play a whole season like that. And that was never going to happen, was it? Yeah. Uh, we've got Patrick. How's it going? How do you think the Liverpool game is going to go? Uh, three one Liverpool. Um, I'm not really sweating that game. We shouldn't win it. Um, we're banged up beyond belief. If Liverpool does anything less than five to one, then something's wrong. Um, <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm not a big Liverpool fan. Frankly, I, I, I hate them. Um, they, <laughs> they, Klopp, and they, not, I don't want to get on a Klopp tirade on a Palace uh, thing, but Klopp is talk about his good. teeth. Yeah, well, I, hey, look, I've been in bar. Hey, hey, I've been in bar fights. I can't talk about anybody's teeth with mine. But nonetheless, uh, this this guy makes more excuses. He never gives the other team any quarter, sort of credit. And every time he loses a big game, which had been many over the years, he's won some, but he should have won more with that talent. He he, including at at Dortmund, he did really well there. Um, but mm. it, it's always an excuse. It's, it, it, the wind blew. The weather is the, the the pitch is bad. Come on, man. Are but, you comparing um, Klopp to Ty? <laughs> I'm thinking that. <laughs> you know, that's a good. Comp- no, I'm stop. Um, but no, I I, I think uh, I think we'll actually play really well tomorrow uh, to the best of what's left of our ability. Hey Tim. Um, How's it going, hey Patrick. Hey, and Hi, I think uh, I think it's like hey, three one. It'll be like a a, a close three one if that makes any sense. Yeah, it does. Uh, before we come on to you, Tim, I saw a comment up here which I want to address first. Hope France starts showing his worth, especially after the hype. I have heard that with Glasner coming in, that the training intensity has gone up uh, quite a lot because he's trying to build fitness. But because of the training intensity gone up, uh, France has actually started to feel his injury that he had when we first bought him again, his groin injury. So that's why he's actually been out. So... Um, Really, the medical staff didn't actually properly clear him of his injury, so he's still feeling it with a little bit more intensity. So is, that's pretty why he's out at the moment still. Is, so is I doubt medical, we'll see him until the end of the season. Is that medical staff still employed? Because for four years, yes. for four, actually, I'll go, I'll go, Allardyce. Since he came in, well, actually, before that, like, like we have to have the worst medical staff in the league, but no one their owners, and I'm not even talking about Steve Paris, I'm talking about the American one. Uh, that owns the Sixers. Uh, it doesn't surprise me. Anybody that anybody that owns a team that has the same medical staff as the Sixers do, are shit. So we're. It doesn't surprise <laughs> me. Is there any talk of them being cleared out? Has there been anything new? Physio. Well, you yeah, know the, the, chief, doctor, you know, the chief doctor's going to Arsenal. Yeah. So yeah, he's exactly. Arsenal's problem in the summer. Thank God, because yeah, he went from Liverpool to us. Patrick, one second. Now. Oh, sorry. Yeah, but he. He went. He went from Liverpool to us, and they had endless injury problems with him at Liverpool. They got rid of him. Very few injuries. So make of that what you will. So hopefully now they're putting a load of Arsenal players on the shelf in the summer because I, I don't know. Our medical department's a joke because you heard what Galatasaray said about Zaha. So right. yeah, we we, we need a, we need a clear out. 
Yeah, yeah I think I think we're getting a QPR guy, aren't we? Yes, if I, if I think I'm not so. Mistaken. Yeah. Tim, thoughts on the Liverpool game? I'm going to go two two, which is more Ooh. hopes and dreams than it is any any reality. I you think. think of your heart. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yes. Exactly. It's it's all it's all in my. I mean, I think that's possible. I think it's much more likely that it's three one. Um, and and Liverpool is. Yeah, like you guys said, wounded animal going for going for the Premier League title. This is what they've got. Um, I, it's it's going to be incredibly difficult. Having said that, I do get somewhat excited about the way that Glasner sets up, and if we have some good fortune getting tr- you know turnovers in the in the midfield, if we can turn the ball over and hit them quick. I think we can get goals. I think we can get in behind. I think JP is starting to actually do the job of running in behind, showing he can get pretty quick, keep the ball. That I mean, the goal he took against Man City was terrific. Mm, great finish. It was great finish. Um, so, you know what? I mean, I think it's possible, but I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I that's that's totally with my heart. I, that's my prediction, but only because that's what I want, not because that's what mm-hmm. I genuinely believe. I mean, we have seen it before that they do struggle against the five at the back formation, don't they? Like when Roy done it a few years ago, we we got was it Roy or was it uh, Vieira? But we we got a one one at their place, which is just unheard of. For Crystal Palace. That Vieira. was under that was under Vieira, and that was that you know. Uh, Ebbs and, and Zaha were, were back and you remember that Ebbs gets the turn and he hits he hits Wilf right on that brilliant pass and he, he you know cuts the angle and one nil. He, take, he takes it early as well, which is something they, we need to do a little bit. They leave a lot of they uh, sorry to interrupt, they leave a lot of space behind. They play such Definitely. a hard line. Definitely. They're, that's why we have to have some pace in that front three. Yeah, yeah. Def- definitely. If you see if you see the tactic that me and Dan done, you basically beat Liverpool the same way you beat Man City. You put a ball over the top or you put it in behind and run onto it because City's centre-backs are extremely slow and that's how it worked against them. However, Liverpool's centre-backs are a bit faster, so you need to be a little bit more on the money well, with those kind of passes. Teams. But, as Tim said, if Ebbs can get a run, get the turn on, I'm sure he could slip JP in behind somehow. Because even though we might play crap football. We might sit back enough against city. We've actually built the ball up. We actually played good football against them. I wouldn't say it was, you get the ball, kick it long and hope for the best. We actually tried to play through them and it was actually quite successful at points. So, you know, I do think we are going to score here, but I don't think we're going to outscore them. That's the problem. Yeah, that's uh, yes. I, I, I'd agree with that. I mean, it'll, I, I am enjoying I, I guess I'll put it this way. I am enjoying the way that Glasner plays. I don't understand the <laughs> comments when I see them about longing for Roy or that Roy could get us the the, the wins against the big six. I mean, I know that's true. That has happened. It's not yeah. like it it's not like it didn't happen, but it happened with Vieira. I mean, we have don't don't forget that in Vieira's first season, one of the best moments of Vieira's first season was that away win at City. Remember that? And then yeah, you know we were there. Oh, brilliant! I mean, what a that was one of the but the the greatest moments of that season. So it's not like let's not pretend that Roy is some magician against the top six, we got to give Glasner a little bit of time here. I like the way he sets us up to play. I also like that he sees, or at least this is what it looks like to me, guys. It looks like he sees Wharton's quality and he is trusting him now, which is exactly what he should be doing because the man is quality. He is tremendous. What I like about him is the fact that he had no problem within a minute of taking the job, called out the problem. I mean, immediately the conditioning. Yeah, I agree. I mean, he didn't care whose toes he was stepping on. He immediately did that. And that has been, just like the medical, that's been a problem forever too. 
Well, he 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 completely hauled out the coach and stuff, didn't he? I think the only one he kept was Paddy. Yeah, Wish and Kylie. Kept. He kept Dean Kylie. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Do, do, but, do you guys think that um that Glazer's like setting Palace up to play through Wharton now as an in, like an integral cog in the team now? Do, I mean, I I hate to answer a question with a question, but like, isn't that that looks like the setup? Like it, it it's almost like a fulcrum. He he's we we it looks like it looks like Wharton is good enough on the ball. It's he doesn't he doesn't give it up very easily. He rides a challenge pretty well, gets rid of the ball mm -hmm. in a in a reasonable spot, and then makes himself available to get it again and distribute. He's a he's somebody you can play off of, right? Yeah. I think they do they do 50 50 because I think he has no he has a little, and this might come across as a dig, but it's really not. He has a little alanites in him where it's not just it's the long ball, but it's not just pop poof and let let's get let's hope. He's He's kicking the long, they're doing the long balls into the alleys. And and then, you know, if we just don't have the pace to get to him at the moment unless mm -hmm. it's JP. But I, I I like that diversity of doing it in the attack. Yeah. I I I think it's you you say Wharton's an integral part, but I would say that Decore is probably also as integral to next yeah. season because yeah. that lens team that we bought Decore from, where they had a midfield two, which is what we play now of Decore and Seco for Fana. It reminds me a lot of that midfield, just without mm. the goal scoring in it. Because the composure on the ball and the passing ability of that midfield of Wharton and Decore, also with the ball winning ability, I would say that that two man midfield could probably boss a few teams that have an extra man in midfield, even though they've got one less. That's how good I reckon that midfield will be. But the question is, are we going to see that next season? And I really hope we do. I really I hope, hope so. we do. I hope so. I think I'm we're going to see Lerma at center back next year. I uh, can we just hang? So hang on with that. Like I agree, I, with Patrick. Actually, I hope. Really? I, hope not. I hope we actually buy a proper center back. And That's keep, the well, thing. Like yeah, Nate already. Nate already said it. Let's give Nate some credit. He already said it. Go buy Ronnie Edwards. What are we waiting for? The kid's a baller. Well, we might even get him, but the thing with me is I know I'm not gonna get all pumped up about the all season yet because I know what they do. We've all been fans for X amount of years. Parrish gets three in. Three. And, and and he's gonna say, Oh, we got Rob Holding over here. Oh, we got Joe Ward right there. I'm telling I'm you, not that's what's played for Palace, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> that guy that we need an APB on that guy. He is well, I he's guess he's in Nashville. <laughs> that's not that's not true. We he's in Nashville. Him. Tim, I hear that. I hear that. But you got to remember, uh, Patrick is right in that we normally only get three in, but we've got a rake of players out of contract. Yeah. yeah so for sure. if there's ever a time to bring players in, it's by letting a lot of these players go. Nathan no Ferguson, not not the answer. Kid had potential, but too many injuries. Another sick note. Rob Holding, sick note. Wouldn't be too sure that we tried to sell him on, even if it's for peanuts, just get him gone. There's so many players that should have been moved on time ago, we've been guilty of holding on to. And yep. no pun intended for the for, for, for what I meant there. But what I mean is, is that yeah. is it likely that we're going to get Ronnie Edwards and everything's going to be rosy in the garden? No. But if there's ever a time to get a player like that, get in on the ground floor. Don't let him go to a team in and around us or just slightly above us. And then we're thinking, oh, that's another player we missed out on. Because, I, you know, you would have heard Colin, uh, no relation, by the way, talking about how, well, I could have signed Van Dyke at Palace. So why didn't you? Yeah. All you had to do was push Parrish to spend the money and you could have done it. Instead, we had to watch Martin Kelly play at centre-back for a few years. No disrespect on Martin Kelly, but this is what I'm saying. When yeah. you don't get in on the ground floor on players like Ronnie Edwards, you're going to say, oh, yeah, I wonder what happened to him. We could have signed him. Mm -hmm. Instead of, oh, wow, we've actually signed him. Now we actually get to watch him play for us. He should have been bought in the offseason. He, he should have been the first. Yeah. He, I don't care. He, once we sold the dude to um, Leon, I forget, I mean, you just talked about him. We Jacob Bryan. Him. Jacob yeah. Bryan. We should have had him in. There's a reason Jacob Bryan wanted to leave, and I don't blame him. I said it at the time yeah. of the summer. I, I think, think with I think the, the, the new formation as well, I think that even if we keep everyone, I still feel like we need a centre-back anyway because we play, we play three centre-backs, and really yeah. – if you've got three centre-backs that start every week, 
you really need about six in the squad then. Yeah. And it to cover for injuries, cover for cup games, cover for rotation. A hundred percent. Maybe even like like if you get rid of holding and then bring in Edwards and Mosquera. Right. For example. But there's both of them won't be too much backs. at the moment. Yeah. yeah. You need you need ball playing center backs. That I, I mean, mean that, that's crucial to this system. Mm. I know we won't get him. But that that guy at Torino that we were linked with, I, I know it's it's nowhere near feasible to sure. get him. But that, you mean sure? First yours. There's yep. another player that we're thinking. All right, yeah. logically speaking, there'd be clubs higher up the food chain that could get him. But if we get yeah. in on the ground floor, with we're laughing because if he actually does turn out to be good or even better than that, again, that's another masterstroke of it. You know what? We brought him in for this, got him for a massive profit. Just keep and sell. It's not it's not difficult. Yeah, but we're so sure. reluctant to get in on the ground floor with some of these players, JC, and you know this better than anyone. You're thinking, yes, there's a risk of signing a Ronnie Edwards who's never played a minute of Premier League football. Michael Elise hadn't. Eze hadn't. So, yeah, it's either sign it and run the risk or don't sign him, see him go somewhere else, and you're thinking, oh, what could have been? And then you get more and more fans crying on Twitter, which, to be fair, on <laughs> Palace Twitter is near enough every day, which is always fun for me because I'm like... This is why I'm very rarely on this anymore because I just can't stand the moaning. Yeah, I, I think Glasner will. Um, I don't think he will buy him personally because I think managers they they like to stick with what they know, and I think he will find will have three or four players from Germany from what he knows from his old clubs or the club mm, right. before who knows how point. to play the system, and I think he'll go that way. It's a good point. I, I would agree, but I would also throw in the hat that. In recent times, how many times has Dougie actually missed? And I think that Glasner's going to see that and go, Elise's sick, Eze's great, Wharton's yeah, great, Decore's great, Anderson and Gay are great, Munoz is great. He's probably going to sit there and go, well, I, w- I would like these players, but if Dougie can find a similar profile of player for cheaper, maybe even closer, because then there won't be any work permit issues, for example, like yeah. we did, like we had with France, let's say. But before we uh, we round out, uh, I think we most of us already touched on it, but we're just going to go back through again. Is who? What is everyone's score predictions for this game? So, Patrick, I'll start with you. Uh, three one Liverpool. Alise scores our one goal. Tim, I'll go. I'm going to stick with my two two. A late equalizer from from Alise on a free kick. Chairman, I think two nil Liverpool. Personally, Nate, or is he gone? No, no, I'm here. I'm here. Um, I would love us to snatch a point and say one all, but I can't help but see a two one because, unfortunately for us, we are the lamb to the slaughter with knowing that Liverpool are a wounded animal. So this could be peak. But having said that, if Mateta turns into anything other than Jean Philippe Mateta and actually bags a couple in. It could be a fun weekend for me because a lot of my colleagues are Liverpool fans and they've been talking a little bit too cocky before last night. Funnily enough, I can't seem to get hold of them today, but head says one all. No, head says 2-1 Liverpool. Heart says one all Palace. I'll take a draw, but love a win. Just to get that horrible monkey off the back of losing to Liverpool every yeah. turn. But yeah, I can't help but say 2-1 Liverpool, but I hope I'm wrong. For once, I hope I'm wrong. Yeah, I- I'll have to say... Um... 2-1 Liverpool as well. I feel like it'll be one of those games where the tradition's going to carry on. I do think we're going to score first, but we're just going to lose it again from, <laughs> from a leading position, and we love to do that this season. But, guys, thank you very much for joining me, Tim. Thank you very much for jumping on. Patrick, thank you very much for jumping on, as always. Uh, Nate, it's good to see you again, mate. And Chairman, big up yourselves, and as always, guys, up the palace. Up the power. Eagles. 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 Eagles.